Hello friends, welcome back to interview preparation channel. In this video, we are going to discuss one of the most frequently asked interview questions, how to optimize SQL queries. Before we begin, I want to clarify that we won't be delving deeply into each concept, as our primary objective is to help you succeed in your interviews. So, let's get started now. First way to optimize SQL query is add missing indexes. As you must have aware about that, table indexes in databases help retrieve information faster and more efficiently. In SQL Server, when you execute a query, the optimizer generates an execution plan. If it detects the missing index that may be created to optimize performance, the execution plan suggests this in the warning section. With this suggestion, it informs you which columns the current SQL should be indexed, and how performance can be improved upon completion. Second way is, we should avoid using multiple or in the filter condition like in where clause. Friends, when you need to combine two or more conditions, it is recommended to eliminate the usage of the OR operator because SQL server cannot process OR operator within one operation. Instead, it evaluates each component of the OR operator separately which may lead to poor performance. If we split this query into two select queries and combine them by using the union operator, SQL Server will be able to make use of the indexers, and the query will be optimized. Third way is, we should use wildcards at the end of a phrase only. When wildcards in SQL Server work as a placeholder for words then, it can be added at the beginning, end of them. To make data retrieval faster and more efficient, you can use wildcards in the select statement at the end of a phrase. For example, in this query, we will retrieve a list of customers whose first name matches the specified condition, that is, their first name starts with, and. Next way is, we should avoid too many joins. When you add multiple tables to a query and join them, you may overload the server. In addition, a large number of tables to retrieve data from may result in an inefficient execution plan. Consider a scenario where you have three tables, customers, orders, and products. Each customer can have multiple orders, and each order can contain multiple products. Let's say you want to retrieve the customer details along with the total number of orders and the total amount spent by each customer. In this example, instead of joining all three tables together, we utilize a subquery to calculate the total number of orders and the total amount spent by each customer in the orders table. We then left join the customers table with the subquery result based on the customer underscore id to retrieve the desired information. So by using subquery, we can minimize usage of join. Next is, we should avoid using select distinct in any statement. The SQL distinct operator is used to select only unique values of the column and thus eliminate duplicated values. Distinct make the query run slowly. So instead of distinct, we should use select statement and specify all the columns that can make result unique. Next up is, we should use select fields instead of select asterisk. The select statement is used to retrieve data from the database. In the case of large databases, it is not recommended to retrieve all data because this will take more resources on querying a huge volume of data. Instead of select asterisk, we should specify column which is required in result set, as it will not take much time as compared to select asterisk. Next is, we should use top to get limited rows. The select top command is used to set a limit on the number of records to be returned from the database. In this example, we define the limit of 5 records in the results set along with wild character to get required result only. If you found the video valuable, we encourage you to subscribe, like, comment, and share. By subscribing, you will stay updated with our latest uploads and never miss out on new content that can benefit you.